Hey, it's Avan here, excited to go into the next section, which is all about financial planning. Now, I want to attribute a little bit of credit here to these two books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and Cashflow Quadrant, which I definitely recommend you read if you haven't. And I want to discuss the formula to your financial goals. And this is just something that I've followed and it, it worked really well for me. And I'll tell you a little story about how I implemented a couple of things that I learned in this book. Now, there's a quote, which I actually, I screenshotted this from Instagram, so it could be a little bit taken out of context, but the concept is accurate and you can read more about it in this book. It says here, rich is measured in dollars. Wealth is measured in time. For example, most people think 1 million is rich, but if expenses are 100K a month, wealth is only 10 months. How long you can survive without working is how wealthy you are. Being wealthy is more important than being rich. Now, to put this also in context with me launching this membership at the time of recording and so on, I've actually worked to get to the stage where I can launch this membership in Kajabi, where I've paid my rent six months in advance. I've paid my business expenses a year in advance, paid all my annual subscriptions. And yes, there's a few expenses here and there, like virtual assistants and stuff like that, that I pay bit by bit, um, by week or by month or whatever. But overall, I've attempted to pay things six to 12 months in advance and also have a bit of reserves so I can have even longer if I need to, to buy me the time to be able to make this membership really world class. That's kind of my goal. Okay. So let's talk about this formula a little bit. So Passive income greater than living and business expenses. That is the formula. It is really simple. doesn't matter who you are. The whole point is to have passive income bigger than what you are burning in terms of dollars for your living and business expenses. Now, expenses obviously vary depending on the lifestyle, where you live, your family status, mortgages, travel, all this stuff makes a difference. So you need to know where you're at. Now, also for me, I found it very important to eliminate your debt. And what I mean by debt is the bad debt. If you've got a mortgage for an investment property and stuff like that, there is definitely tax advantages to having a debt. So I'm not saying all debt, debt is bad, but there's definitely just unsecured debt. It's just, it's just a burden, right? Having that over your head and I've experienced it myself. It's no fun and you definitely want to focus on getting rid of it so you can be debt free. Now, here's a little story. So this is in the middle to late 2018, I did my math on this point and based on this formula, how much money do I have to make in passive income in order to live off passive income? Now, Grant Cardone talks about a similar concept in his book, The Millionaire Booklet, which is one of my favorite books, actually, and I definitely recommend you read it. And there's a chapter called The Millionaire Math. Strongly recommend you get this book. I will leave the links to those books below. Now, the math that I did was very, very simple. And I, you know, I'm, I was, I'm very frugal. So it was not, not a huge de deal to live off passive income, but this was my debt at the time, 55 K and I was in a nine to five job and I wanted to get rid of this debt. And this was my numbers. I needed to have 80 people pay me $20 per month. And this is how much I needed in order to live off passive income at that time. This is not the amount now. But at the time, that was my numbers. It was really simple. All that meant is that every single day, my focus was to move and get one person every day or every week and talk to people to be able to increase and fill in these gaps of these 80 people. And that was my goal. My sole focus was to move the needle like that and just get 80 people who pay me an average of 20 bucks a month in order to live off passive income and at the same time pay off like a fire hose, you know, fire hose my debt basically and get rid of it. That was my sole focus, which brings me to another section, which I will do a different video on this. And this is statistics slash KPIs, key performance indicators or key performance metrics. Uh, and these are the two main statistics that I focused on. I focused on how much passive income I make or earn and how much debt do I have left? And that's all I focused on in this time period from May to late 2018 until I became debt free. Now I became debt free around July, I'd say July, 2020. 
that's when I became debt free and I lived off passive income. It was actually above that amount. But by the time I reached that stage, it took me two years from the point that I did those numbers to when I got to that stage. It still took me about a year, year and a half to really figure out how do I even make money online, honestly, which that's a whole different story. But once I figured it out until it was about July 2020 that I was living off passive income and became debt free. Now, to do that, you really got to do a planning on your financials. Now, what I suggest is you need to list out all your expenses. And you should do this right after this video. You could open up an Excel spreadsheet or whatever you like to use. I might have a template below to kind of help you with that. But I want you to list out your credit card debt. If you've got a mortgage, list that, car loan, personal debts, whatever. List all of that. Additionally, I want you to list all the things that you're paying for on a weekly or monthly basis, food, groceries, phone bill, software subscriptions, gym memberships, whatever. Okay. And then you need to actually cancel out the ones that you truly don't need. And you guys got to be honest with yourself. Is this really adding much value to you? Now, later down the stage, sure, you can add them back on once you're earning the passive income. But for right now, eliminate, cut down your expenses. If you're earning higher than what your living expenses is, you got a bit of surplus, start paying off your debt to save up on interest. When you've done that and you've paid your debt off and you've actually also got rid of your subscriptions, you could do what I did, which is go for paying for things up front. So I've paid my subscriptions up front, one year, two years, whatever I was able to do. I even wrote to the software companies that I subscribe to and I say, hey, if I pay you two years up front, can I please have a discount? I had one company that said yes, and I paid uh, two years up front on that particular subscription. Surprisingly, the other company said no, they don't want my money. So I said, fine, I'll pay a year in advance. Another way to save money is, of course, buying software deals that are lifetime, one-time payment. Now, this is something to be discussed for a different video because this can be really risky because you're buying deals that may not even remain like in business because they're one-time payment. So it's not sustainable for them. And it is a gamble. And also you could start buying stuff just because you think you're saving money and you end up just wasting because you're not even using the software. This is a really quite a bit of a trap, but sometimes you land with really good deals. And I'll do a completely separate video on this particular topic of lifetime deals. All right. So if you can figure out those things and actually make a list of all your expenses, all your overheads and all that stuff, figure out how to cut them off and get rid of it, eliminate them, and that'll be a great start. And then do your numbers. What do you actually need to earn? What are you gonna sell your services for in order to get ahead and get your debt down to zero and live off passive income? One last thing I will say, and this is kind of the point of this having the house. There's only so much, think of your expenses as reducing them. So there is a floor. There is only so much you can do, okay? Because expenses, I mean, you still have to eat, you still have to pay business expenses. If you're going to hire people, you know, there's only so much you can cut off. What you really should be focusing on is your income because that has no ceiling and it can go all the way to infinity. And that's uh, or like the, it's infinite, right? So that's why it's really important that you actually really do focus on income, which is what I typically focused on, which is 80% of your time should be strictly on sales and marketing. So this particular practical after this video should take you an hour, two hours. Don't spend more than that. The laying it out is quick, depending on how much subscriptions you have. If you want to negotiate with different debts or whatever, that's something that you will definitely want to implement. And then once you've done as much as you can on that, you need to literally put your head down and focus on sales and marketing most of the time. Hope that helps. Hope you got value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.